Hi guys and a big welcome back to VR Essentials, a brand new format here, trying something new but a little bit more about that later as I sold my camera. Today we're talking about whether you should upgrade from the HP Reverb G2, the one in the middle there, next to the Pico 4 and the DPVR E4 to the Pimax Crystal as I had one of the guys come here to the VR Essentials studio and had the chance to try it for good three hours and even better news thanks to you guys and your support to the channel Pimax have agreed to include me as part of their influencer program and they will send me a brand new Pimax crystal for at least three months which I'll be able to try every single day and test out and bring you some awesome content for that so do hit the likes to thank them first of all and also the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of all the various different videos that I will post including side by side through the lens, graphics, gameplay, all this kind of good stuff compared to the, of course, HP Reverb G2 and the PVR E4 and, of course, the Pico 4. And if I'm lucky enough to still have the headset, why not the Meta Quest 3 versus the Pimax Crystal? Mm. And guys, moving on swiftly to today's video as I will provide you all my feedback in terms of comfort, gameplay, graphics, all this kind of stuff, comparing it more to the HP Reverb G2. So do stay tuned for that in today's video. But first, by the way, Pimax are doing a special event for those who have a G2. So let's go and check it out very quickly. By the way, big thanks to Pimax also, of course, for including us in the influencer program as they will send us, as I mentioned, one of the Pimax crystals for up to three months and potentially more, who knows? So that's gonna be really, really awesome. But yeah, basically they've been doing a study with those who own an HP Reverb G2 and really trying to get those, you know, to, to get people who have a G2 to get to upgrade to the Pimax Crystal because of course the cost is three times the cost compared to a brand new HP Reverb G2 today. Although by the time perhaps you may have purchased your G2, if it was two, three years ago, then of course the cost wouldn't be so much higher, but still, there are some costs there as the Pimax Crystal is a good 1600 US dollars, excluding, you know, taxes and a whole bunch of other things, of course. So it can be a little bit costly. So the biggest difference is, of course, between the HP Reverb G2 is the clarity, the nice built-in quality and the mobility for the HP Reverb G2 versus the Pimax Crystal. It also has that, but it also has edge-to-edge -edge clarity which really is missing from the HP Reverb G2. And we will go through this a little bit more later in this video. However, what is really interesting is that apparently most people uh, have actually said that the difficulty between, you know, uh, what, what's really holding people back to upgrade is actually the pricing of the crystal itself. So they have a new thing, by the way, where basically what they're trying to do is do some financing where you can pay in full payments with no interest. So for those who are afraid about, you know, potentially, you know, oh no, I can't upgrade because it's really, really super expensive. Actually, you'll be able to make four payments of 282.87 uh, US dollars for over, over a period of six months, it says here. So that's actually not bad at all, to be honest with you. Um, but we will go through the actual, you know, whether you should upgrade and all these kind of things. And also, um, do go to the website and read all the various different, you know, terms and conditions and also which countries uh, you can actually go through this specific, um, you know, payment gateway because it doesn't actually, I believe, apply to every single country in the world itself. But, you know, apparently a lot of people who are G2 owners want to upgrade, but the biggest difficulty, as I mentioned, was the fact that the pricing was really, really high. Now, I think that's great that VR manufacturers are doing this kind of thing because basically also beyond from Big Screen who released their own VR headset. Now, you do need base stations, you do need specific controllers for it and all this kind of stuff. So it's another kettle of fish, but they're also providing, of course, a means to make it easier for people to purchase as it's a really, really expensive VR headset too. Uh, due to its custom and, and everything that goes with it. So, you know, it's good that financing is finally coming into play where it gives more chances for more people to get the barrier of entry easier into PCVR. Don't you think? Leave a comment below, guys. Let me know what you think about this payment financing installment schemes as, you know, whether it makes it easier or makes you still feel, well, you know, it's still a lot of money. Maybe I don't really want to get into it right now. 
Let's spark that conversation in the comments below. But now let's get on to the actual video of today's topic, which is whether you should upgrade from the HP Reverb G2 to the Pimax Crystal with my thoughts. So the third thing to talk about is of course the build quality as the tactile experience will be the first thing you get to have after you take it out of the box. I'm happy to report that it certainly does not feel like a cheap toy whatsoever. You know, you are paying a lot of money, so you do expect to have something that looks like or feels like it will withstand time itself and knocking things and all that kind of stuff. Now, it is made of plastic, but the plastic is pretty robust and it really does feel like a tank. So I was pretty happy about that. Now, in terms of the controllers, there is nothing really special there. Although what I do like is the fact that they're not using batteries in order to charge the controllers. You just use, you know, a micro USD or USB-C um, to charge the actual controllers and they will last absolutely for a long, long time. Something I'm really happy about because to be honest with you, it's really a pain to recharge batteries and, you know, have to buy new rechargeable batteries when they go out as well. And then, you know, having to keep recharging it, you know, it's just something nice to be able to plug in to the electricity directly into the controller and then boom, that's it. No waiting. Now, even though the build quality feels very, very solid, of course, I would take very great care of the Pimax Crystal in making sure that, you know, you don't drop it as you never know, you know, you never know. But, you know, when you put it on for the very first time, I have to admit that the weight, you do feel the weight, but I put on an HTC Vibe Pro 2 before, and for those who have that headset, will probably feel that it's comparable to you know, in terms of the weight when you have it on your head. So for those who are used to having an HP Reverb G2, definitely you will feel the weight on your head for sure. I'm not quite sure whether it's really, you know, the right headset to use if you're doing, for example, VR Fitness with Beat Saber or Synth Riders, you know, those kind of different things. Or, you know, whether it's purely meant for sitting down experiences, for example, like, you know, Automobilista 2 or Aceto Corsa or Microsoft Flight Simulator, then I think it's okay to have it on your head, although I only use it for a good couple of hours, but I have to say that you do feel the weight on your head, even though the weight is distributed pretty equally, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's 1.1 kg on your head. What can you do about it? Nothing really, but at least, of course, they didn't have the same design as the Quest 2, let's say, with everything on one side, that would have been completely catastrophic, without a doubt. The gasket was very, very comfortable. It came with some kind of foam or something, and you know, I'm not quite sure of the actual material, but it was very, very comfy. I have to admit, there's a couple of different ones that you can actually use or purchase or that might be able to come with it. Um, the one that I tried was a little bit wider on the forehead, covering most of the forehead, in fact, and I have to say it was really, really comfortable. For those who wear specs, I guess you may want to be a little bit careful to make sure that your glasses don't actually touch the lenses. I would also recommend if you have specs that are a little bit too big and that, you know, may fit too snug inside and hurt you on the side of your actual face to perhaps bring the headset with you to the optician and purchase smaller frames that would fit inside of the actual headset as that's what I did when I purchased my, uh, when I purchased, I mean, when I was sent the Pico 4 and when I was sent the HP Reverb G2, especially the G2, the actual width of the headset itself is much less wider compared to the Pico 4. So it's very important to have glasses that aren't wide and don't, you know, that fit inside really more than just snug, you need at least 2 mm on each side to make sure that the sides don't hit the actual edges of the headset. So that would be my advice to you. And make sure, you know, don't bang the glass, you know, it's quite expensive. Just, you know, take care of your lenses and they will take care back of you. During the gameplay, comparing it to the G2 and also to the DPVR E4, you know, when you're using the DPVR E4, you will definitely notice a sound of a fan that's turning around, especially when you're playing things like Half-Life Alex or something that's a little bit calmer, because when you're playing car sims, of course, the noise of the engine is pretty loud, so you wouldn't really notice it. But with the actual Pimax Crystal, there's no noise of any fans that I used, I mean, during the one that I was using anyway, you know, none of that. In fact, the audio was the only thing I, I could hear. And compared to the Valve Index speakers, if you can get yourself the actual additional audio, um, you know, speakers, I would definitely go for it because they are marvelous, absolutely fantastic. The sound is very loud. You will not need to put it to full blast 
for sure. Now, the difference between the Index um, audio uh, headset and speakers and the ones from the actual Pimax Crystal is that people who are around you or next to you will definitely hear you versus the ones from the Index or the G2, which is a collaboration with Valve Index, then you won't hear it. So you only get to hear it yourself and not other people, so you don't get to disturb those who are around you. But other than that, the bass is fantastic, the treble very well balanced. I have to say that the sound and the audio quality inside of the Pimax Crystal was phenomenal. Now, in terms of the graphics, if you want to know whether you should upgrade from the G2 to the Pimax Crystal, first of all, go and watch the other video that I also uploaded a few days ago, whether you should upgrade from the G2 to the DPVR E4, because it's also on compressed 4K graphics, right? So definitely go and check out that video. But I have to admit that the clarity inside of the Pimax Crystal, because I speak about this inside of the G2 versus the DPVR-E4, where the graphics of the G2 are very sharp, very clear. There's no bleeding of any colors of any kind. You know, everything is just absolutely great. I mean, if you have a really good graphics card, especially in the 3000 series, as I'm using a RTX 2070 with an i7 9700K, so most people today who go into VR would most probably have a better computer spec out. They would probably have maybe, I don't know, an RTX 360 or 380 or some kind, or even an RTX 490. And why not throw it in the mix? An i9 for some of you who are, you know, DJs in the world of VR, right? So for me, you know, I don't, I have a very good solid medium built PC, but not the high spec for sure. And I have to say that the G2 performs really, really well. There's not too much ghosting when I'm playing. And also, everything that is far away, especially when I'm doing car sims, everything that is further away in the distance isn't too blurry, it's pretty sharp. So it really gives me the illusion that I'm really inside of my cockpit and I'm really racing against other people in a really fantastic, fantastic way. But when you compare it to the Pimax Crystal, I have to admit now, before I go into the good stuff, whenever it comes to the user interface things, like for example, um, you know, when you open up the panel for the settings or something like that, for some kind of reason, there is color bleeding around those kind of UIs or user interface. I'm not quite sure why, but there's no actual color bleeding around any other parts of the gameplay in the apps that I tried, which were Half-Life Alex, and also the other one that I tried was uh, Automobilista 2 or Assetto Corsa, sorry. So, you know, but at the end of the day, there was no color bleeding in the games themselves, other than when I brought out the user interface only around the edges of the actual uh, panels. But the actual gameplay itself, I have to say that, you know, when you're looking at, for example, pixels that are very clear inside of the G2, they're even more clear. You, I mean, it is comparable because they're clearer, I would say, but at least 2x, at least two times clearer, which is really, really phenomenal because everything that is even further away suddenly becomes even clearer. Like you, you think that when you try the G2, there isn't anything else that's clearer than that, right? Well, put on the Pimax and suddenly you're going to feel, wow, just, wow. You just don't really know how to react because you're like, Wow, but d does it really make your experience with the G2 all of a sudden you want to throw away your G2? No, because the G2 is a very, very powerful and capable VR headset for sure. But I just have to admit that the, the, the fact that the, excuse me, the crystal clarity of those pixels using those lenses that they put inside of the Pimax is just really phenomenal. Um, there aren't many jagged edges whatsoever. All the most of the flicker is gone from my RTX 2070. I mean, it's just really, really amazing. And, and you know, the, the, the edge to edge clarity inside of the lenses, for example, compared to the G2, is almost comparable to, let's say, a pancake lens or to the DPVR-E4 Fresno lenses, which, you know, are clear completely edge to edge. So when you're moving your eyeball left, right, or up and down, then there's no blurriness whatsoever. Everything is just super, super clear. Even when you're wearing your glasses inside of the headset, unless your glasses are dirty, let's say, on the edges of the frames uh, or uh, of the glass, the lenses, then you know, you're not going to see any distortions or any blurriness or any color bleeding of any kind. Just everything is absolutely perfect. And I have to say that when you're playing the games and you s feel so immersed inside of it, you suddenly start to forget about the weight. But you know, the weight does come back when suddenly you're looking up towards the sky or you're looking down towards the ground. 
then, you know, you got to be careful because you definitely will feel the weight. And I definitely would not advise playing games like Population One or Contractors, where you're moving your body a lot, a lot of the time, you know, with the Pimax, simply because of safety. But, you know, take it with, that's just my personal opinion, of course. It's up to you what you do and what games you play. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just advising you in terms of the games that perhaps are most suitable for the Pimax Crystal definitely would have to be car sims. As you're not really looking left or right all that often, you know, you only look at your opponents here and there. Or, you know, when you look inside of the mirrors, you don't really tilt your head that much, to be honest with you. So, you know, it's all good. Or when you're playing Half-Life Felix, it's okay. Although you do get to move your head now and then quite often as well. So I would just be a little bit cautious also for playing things like Under Citadel or, you know, um, you know, Contractors, Population One, you know, all these RPGs and, you know, Emporgs and also, um, you know, adventure games and first person shooters definitely would be a little bit careful there. Now, when I tried the Pamex Crystal, I did not try the wireless version. I tried the wide version. And I have to say that all in all, my experience was pretty good. The batteries can last up to, I believe, three hours, but there's also an adapter which charges the batteries that can last, make them last up to six or so hours. So, you know, plenty of gameplay to do there. I have to say it's more than good enough. I doubt that most people would spend all day in VR, to be honest with you. I think most of us would spend between the time of two hours to about four hours, roughly. So plenty of battery power there. Plenty of really good gameplay to go by in terms of the juice that comes with the Pimax Crystal. Now, I have to say that one of the things that impressed me the most inside of the Pimax Crystal is, of course, the field of view, which is magnificent. It really does make you feel like there's so much more around when you're inside of a VR game, especially in car sims, as you don't have to turn your head so much as you will know straight away if someone is trying to pass you and also as you're trying to pass someone else you will get to see their car disappear in the horizon on the side of your eyes which is pretty phenomenal i have to admit it just makes you feel like you're there part of the action much more than when you're wearing the hp reverb g2 as you have this kind of tunneling vision tunneling vision excuse me even if you know you adjust your ipd to a certain degree where you get to see more field of view well i have to admit that you know it's just not good enough inside of the g2 so the pimax crystal here for sure wins a big deal but where it does fail is the tracking a little bit especially when you bring your controllers more towards the actual front of the headset so far, the headset, the Pimax Crystal I was trying, was more or less towards the final one that's been released. And I have to admit that, well, it would lose the tracking and, you know, the controllers would just hang there when the controllers, I brought them more towards the actual front of the headset itself. So hopefully I'm pretty sure that it is something that, of course, Pimax will be able to fix with a software update in the Crystal for sure. But I thought it would be better to share this as well with you in today's video. In conclusion, what I have to say is the fact that this headset here, the HP Reverb G2, even though after I tried the Pamax for you know good three, four hours, I have to say that it didn't compromise my, you know, my 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 comfort with this headset. Like the moment that I put this headset back on, I didn't feel, oh no, it's such a crappy headset now. I must have the Pimax, you know? So that I was really, really happy about because when I put the Pimax on and then I tried the DPVRE4, unfortunately, it caused more issues for me in terms of visuals, in terms of mistakes that I was starting to see that I, perhaps I didn't see before I put the Pimax Crystal. And yes, I did see some more mistakes inside of the HP Reverb G2 as well. But at the end of the day, it just, you know, I'm still very happy to wear this VR headset, I have to admit. And the thing is, I can't, I have, I've only used it for three hours. So should you upgrade from the G2 to the Pimax Crystal? Well, I'll tell you this. What I'm really happy about this is the fact that I can play all my RPGs, all my shooters, all those games where I get to move my head left and right. You know, I wouldn't do that with the Pimax. So I would not upgrade for that reason. But I loved the graphics. Like I really want to play the Pimax more. I really want to get more of it because when I was playing my Sims, I didn't, I mean, I felt the weight, of course, the weight is there, but I could still wear the headset for a good couple of hours or maybe three hours. And, you know, it was still okay, even though I could feel the weight, okay? 
I wouldn't wear the Pimax every single day. So I think it, what would be great is to have this headset as what we call in the film industry as my B camera or my B headset. Because in the industry, you know, they have like the best camera and then they have the not so good cameras as backup cameras or cameras that don't cost as much, but they still produce good quality. So if my head, if I was starting to feel pain on my shoulders or, you know, something like that, and I couldn't wear the Pimax for, let's say, a few days or I had to take a rest or I just wanted to take a rest anyway and not wear the Pimax every day, then I would use this as a substitute in between my sessions with the Pimax. That's what I would do just to stay safe, okay? But of course, everyone does what they want. Now, whether you should upgrade from this to the Pimax, I wouldn't see it as an upgrade. I, I can't really tell you, go ahead and buy the Pimax. All I can tell because I didn't use it that long, all right? But now that I'm part of their influencer program and they're gonna send it to me for a good three months, I'll be able to use it for much longer and do more testing with it. And also the comfort, really get a good feel about the comfort there. So then I'll be able to say, okay, go from this to the Pimax for sure. But all I can tell you right now is I had a really good experience with the Pimax. I wasn't disappointed at all with the crystal, the quality, the build, the graphics, all these kind of things. It ran really well on my RTX 2070, everybody. Not even an RTX 380 or whatever it might be. RTX 2070 on a 97, 9700K, it ran perfectly well. I was really happy with it. So just goes to show that at the end of the day, would I purchase it? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it's got any problems or anything like that. I'm just saying to you that I was happy during those three hours, but I certainly wouldn't buy it and then sell this. I would still keep this if I purchased the Pimax as a substitute or my BVR headset. So there you go, guys. I hope that this, you know, answer some of your queries and that you appreciated today's video. Do smash the likes to thank Pimax and for them to send us the crystal as we're now part of the influencer program and also smash the notifications as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I will do a lot of content comparing the Pimax crystal with the HP Reverb G2, the Pico 4, also the DPVR E4 and why not if I still have it by then, the Meta Quest 3. All right guys, until next time, take it easy. I'll see you in, a very, in another video very, very shortly. Bye for now. Talk to you in the comments below. Bye, bye, bye.